welcome back to DXB Today. Now, as you know, it's all about inclusivity and we have a fantastic innovation that we want to tell you about. And to tell us about it, we have the CEO of I'm Inclusive. Please welcome Hafsa Qadir. Thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you so much for having me. Now, I, I have an imagination of what I'm Inclusive is in my mind, but can you clarify what is it is that exactly? Definitely. So I'm Inclusive is a social enterprise. It's basically the UAE's first social certified enterprise, which is an inclusive employment platform. So we have an inclusive job board. People of determination or people with disabilities can come and apply to the job board. But we also support all kinds of recruitment initiatives when it comes to disability inclusion. Um, when we started this journey, a social business, a certified social business did not exist as a concept. So it was so interesting to begin this and it has been uphill in its ways. But now today, I think we're so happy about having so many candidates with disabilities and having so many employers as well who are opening doors. That's fascinating to know, Hafsa. I was just uh, reading somewhere that um, exclusivity fuels fear and inclusivity fuels acceptance. As a recruiter yourself, how do you actually go about finding th th these talents and really bridging the gap in the market? That's an excellent point that you've made because, you know, many people, when you use the word inclusion, treat it more like a generic term, like it's a layman's term as well. But when you think about it in the recruitment perspective, inclusion has so many different areas within it. We have gender inclusion and then we also have disability inclusion and there's so many different areas to cover. So I think for us to bridge the gap, we have been able to really convey that if you cannot understand the full diagram of inclusion, surely every person has at some account felt exclusion. So do we want the world to feel like that? And then when I say we don't, well, what do our workforces or our teams need to look like for it to be a truly inclusive world? So thank you for mentioning that because we do build on that. What do you think is the biggest challenge from the work that you do between bridging that gap? Is it with the employers? Is it with the talent? Or is it with the people culture that exists within an organization? Um, excellent question. You know, I think in the general talent journey, when you're onboarding somebody into an organization, this huge part of orientation is so key in what we've found. When you onboard a new employee, does the company tell them about disability inclusion priorities within the organization? Because oftentimes we ask employees, do you know that if you acquired a disability, disabilities are not just by birth, if you acquired a disability, do you know what would be your you know, response system within the company? How would you disclose it if you wanted to? Who would you approach? Is it HR? Is it a specific assistance program? So we've realized the gaps are within the entire talent funnel. And we've been studying it now since 2019. And I started the company with my brother, who's a person with disability himself. His name is Ahmed. So Ahmed and I have realized that we have to help the entire talent channel all the way from when you start planning a job description to when you're hiring someone. Um, it matters, every stage matters. I like that you mentioned about writing the job description because obviously when these recruiters are planning a job description, they already have a vision in their head of who they're gonna hire. So how would you encourage them to have a bit more inclusivity in the workplace? I mean, is there a positive outcome in an inclusive team? Thank you so much for asking me that, you know? In the disability inclusion field, it's so important to have role models and to understand that the roles that are being hired for need to have the skill set already in the market. So I'm confident that today, hopefully, some kid with disability is looking at Jessica and they're thinking, you know, I'm aspiring to be a presenter and this is something that I can do in the future. But usually when recruiters come to us and they have job demands which are very specific, or they include maybe like skills that have not been created into the market yet. We ask them, did you ever open an internship in this channel? Because if you never hired through an internship, then how can you expect to hire people in senior roles when people with disabilities have not received those skills yet? Mm -hmm. So from a diversity and inclusion perspective and disability inclusion perspective, people with disabilities do have 81% higher retention rates and they actually increase productivity levels of the team as well. Hafsa, I mean, once or twice in my life, um, you know, I've uh, had the privilege of 
uh, being assisted by a person of determination when I walked into a furniture store once and uh, another time into a fashion store and their service was no different to a person who without any disabilities which I thought was quite fascinating quite refreshing as well so for recruiters when they have the option to hire a person with no disabilities versus a person who does what would you say are some of the apprehensions that they may typically have that stops them excellent question I think it's fear it's fear of the unknown every one of us when we're about to try something new in our field we get scared a little bit right so it's similar for the HR and recruiters they kind of think like what's the liability of this what are the risks involved but actually if they just give a try to somebody even for three months and they start on that journey they do realize that along the lines it's teamwork it's same as hiring anybody else on the team with the adjustable accommodations, reasonable accommodations provided to the person. Uh, inclusivity in the workplace definitely does create a sense of belongingness, which I think is wonderful. Hafsa, thank you so much for coming on the show and sharing such an important message that is really important to get out there. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Louis, I believe you have our DXB in 60 quiz oh, ready yes, for Jessica. Yes, I do. I do. Jessica, I hope you're ready. Well, don't worry. We just want to know a little bit more about you in 60 seconds. Okay. Okay, and your 60 seconds starts in 3, 2, 1. Let's do this. If you weren't an author or advocate for inclusivity, what would you be doing? I've always wanted to be a criminal lawyer. Really? Yeah. What was your first job? At the local swimming pool when I was training, yeah. Your motto in life and work? Never settle for mediocre. An obstacle you wish to resolve in your mission for inclusivity. I wish people under knew, uh, sorry, I wish people understood what accessibility actually is rather than just assuming. Yeah. It's ramps. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> A superpower you wish you had. Oh, I wish I could be invisible. Really? Yeah. The most used app on your phone. Instagram. Mm -hmm. Top podcast re recommendation. Oh, I'm listening to Metal Set podcast, which is actually produced here uh, locally, and it tells the stories, untold stories of female athletes in the Middle East. Oh, we've had them on the show. Oh, okay. There now, I know you write books, but is there a particular book that you're reading at the moment? Oh, you know what? I read books to my kids, but I have one on the bookshelf that I read every now and again. It's called The Winner Stands Alone. And it's by um, Paolo Coelho. One last, why Dubai? I love Dubai. Dubai is safe and it's full of diversity and culture and all the things that we've been talking about. And I think that level of safety as a mother of three children is, is paramount. And so, um, yeah, I'll be here as long as I can. Well, Jessica, it's been amazing having you on the show and you're an inspiration. And thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for having me. And Hafsa, keep up the good work with I'm Inclusive and we hope you go to even bigger heights. Thank you. And for you, stick around because we have a musician in the studio very, very soon. Adam Kadabra is going to be doing his lap tapping and we've got prizes for you as well. So you definitely don't want to go anywhere.